We are honored today to acknowledge the exceptional contribution of Mr. Robert Kogan to the development, nurturing, and sustaining of the Shalom Hartman Institute, its campus, and its wide range of initiatives, as well as bringing full circle a story that began over 30 years ago, a story that began in 1981 when Mr. F Kogan first came to Jerusalem to study with Rabbi Professor David Hartman of Blessed Memory. The deep friendship that developed between the two also became a partnership in leading the planning, policy, and governance of the Hartman Institute. As it grew and transitioned into the leading research and educational center that it is today. Mr. Kogod's legacy to the Institute, and indeed to the city of Jerusalem, is his vision and tireless work, which has been, is so apparent in this beautiful home, which will today be officially named the Robert Kogod Campus. I am honored to invite the president of the Shalom Hartman Institute, Rabbi Dr. Danielle Hartman, to say a few words. Hi, good afternoon. My father was a dreamer. He dreamed of a place in Jerusalem from which a different and ever new Judaism would emerge. A Judaism of excellence, intellectual excellence, moral excellence, spiritual excellence. A Judaism which would be relevant, compelling, pluralistic. A Judaism which would inspire people to want to choose to be Jewish and would want to continue to be Jewish. This year, the year of my father's death, is a year in which all of us are reconnecting to his legacy, to his message, and to his teaching. It's therefore most fitting that precisely in this year, we turn and honor the man who helped turn my father's dream into a reality. And everybody who is close to my father knows that it is precisely the partnership between him and Bob Kogod which made the difference between a man of phenomenal dreams and a man who was able to actualize those dreams. And every single person here and every member of our family is personally indebted for that. And even though this is a sad year, and even though it would have been right if my father was here and he would have loved to be here, it is right that in this year, precisely in this year of mourning and memory, that we give a special, special thanks and recognition. Rabbi Akiva, it's told of Rabbi Akiva that when he finally discovered that he should become a student of Torah, that his wife Rachel said, go, go study. Oh, I'm just looking at my daughter. I know there's a whole bunch of gender issues there. But he said, go study. And she goes, and he goes. And he goes for 12 years, and after 12 years, he comes back. And he comes back with 25,000 students. Comes back a famous man. And his wife was waiting. And some people say to her, oh, get dressed up for your husband. She says, he knows who I am. I don't need to get dressed up for him. He knows what I did. And after 12 years, she approaches him. And one of his students, who obviously never met her because she wasn't there in the Beit Midrash, tries to push her away. And he says the following line to his student. He says, leave her be. Sheli v'shelachem shelahi. What she, everything that I have, and everything that we have, is because of her. In the life of an institution, it's always a partnership. There's so many people in this room who played in this room, who played in this campus, who played and continue to play such a critical role in the life and vibrancy of this institution. And it's always a partnership. Despite all of that partnership, 
The truth is, is that besides my father, there is one individual in the history of this institution in which it is appropriate to say, Shali v'shalanu, shalohi, that everything that we have is because of him. And that person is Bob Koga. I'm going to talk about Bob Koga tonight, but beforehand, I first want to also thank Arlene for sharing him. Uh, thanking, thank you for letting us have a part of him. And thank you for sharing in everything that he did and, his, and in the journey of his life. Um, everything he has is because of you. <laughs> thank you. This week, as many of you know, I lectured about the three things that my father taught me. Today, this afternoon, I'd like to talk about the three things that I learned from my other teacher. The person who, at every single stage of my work and of the life of this institute for the last 30 years, was there. And who left a mark, not just a mark, who built it and shaped it. And I'd like to talk about his Torah, the Torah that I learned from Bob Koga. The first thing I learned from him, I learned the meaning of commitment. In a world where very often people and relationships are measured in tweets and sound bites and in exit policies and exit strategies before you even go in, Bob is made of a different cloth. When he starts something, he sees it through. He invests in the long term. He builds foundations. He runs marathons. He has the patience and the commitment to plant a seed. A seed which might take decades. And as Yehuda taught the board, sometimes it even takes lifetimes. But Bob has that commitment and that patience. He invests in ideas and in people knowing fully well that it could take a lifetime. And when my father started to speak to Bob about his dream of producing the next Maimonides, the idea of producing a next generation of scholars, Bob said, I'm with you. And all of us were 22 at the time. Half of us didn't even have our BAs. And he said, I'm with you. Grow. And when my father said, I'm with you, it was because Bob said, I'm with you. That type of commitment, that type of willingness to stick with something, to be with something, in the good and in the bad, but in the long term, that cultural and value idea has come to define the essence of the way this institute works. We are not an institute which has a solution for intermarriage tomorrow and a solution to solve assimilation, whether in Israel or around the world, or to somehow parachute some magical solutions about democracy. This is an institute about ideas and education, an institute that knows that we're going to spend all of our lifetime hopefully preparing something for our grandchildren. And we could do that because of one man who taught me and taught this institution what it means to invest in what it means to be committed. The second value that I learned from Bob is the value and standard of excellence. Because commitment to the long term could very often be a wall in which you hide mediocrity. Oh, it doesn't matter. Don't ask me now. Speak to me in another 10 years. Speak to me in 20 years. In Bob's world, commitment and excellence coexist. Actually, the notion of commitment is precisely because of his recognition that it takes time for excellence to grow. 
It takes time to make a significant difference in the life of a people. What excites Bob and what he pushed this institute every single day was to a standard of excellence, whether it's excellence in ideas, excellence in the staff, excellence in the administration, excellence in our budgets and reporting, excellence in a campus and construction, excellence in aesthetics. In his world, excellence, however, is not a test in which if you're not excellent, he leaves. Excellence is a mission which he takes upon himself to, to walk with you in partnership. That excellence defined the way he worked tirelessly to move this institution from a family business, small little family business, to the institution that it is today. How do we scale and go from a half a million dollar budget to a million dollar, to two million, to three million, to six million, to today $19 million with over 300 employees? And at that same standard of excellence, how do you do that? And how do you begin? I remember when my father said to me, Daniil, there's a board and they want me to come. He says, I'm not going to a board. <laughs> you go to the board and how he trained me over years with patience. What does it mean to give an excellent presentation to a board? What does it mean to report? What does it mean to be responsible? What does it mean to deliver? What does it mean to give your word? What does it mean to take upon yourself, on his shoulders, the building of this campus? Part of my father's dream was that this was going to be, there was going to be a permanence to the institution. That an institute of ideas wasn't just going to come and go, but that we were going to have a foothold in Jerusalem. And his dream was that his foothold, he'll name it after his father, the Yerushalmi, Shalom Hartman. And Bob said, if you're going to build a campus here, that same standard of excellence which applies to your research is going to apply to the aesthetics of this place. And he took the plans of the original architect and he said, I'm now going to take responsibility. And for years, would come regularly, and David could attest, took over the architectural vision of this campus, oversaw and picked who will build it, personally interviewed, which is the construction firm, made sure that we weren't going to start building the first, first foundation before there was a complete book outlining exactly what we would do, until everything was thought out from A to Z. And he said, I remember to my father, he says, don't worry, just tell me what you need, now get out of the way, and I'll take care of it, and I'll build something. Excellence, which I remember, I never even understood, I never knew that there were different types of stones in Jerusalem. Bob did. He spent two weeks traveling the city, thinking about which stones? Which stones are more porous and less porous? Which stones will withstand the, the test of time? White, different colors. There isn't a detail in this campus that he didn't think about, that he didn't oversee. And now, 17, what is it, 16 or 17 years after its construction, look what happens when your standard is excellence and when you build something of such beauty and a gift to this city, knowing that when you're committed and you have a standard of excellence, then you could touch eternity. The last value amongst many, but the one that I want to mention, is the value of friendship. Bob, you have been first with our family, every single one of us, and with this institution, through everything, everything. There's nothing that happened in our family. There's not a need, there's not a moment. There wasn't an event that occurred that if we needed somebody and we needed to speak with somebody, you weren't the one we called. And there isn't a moment in the history of this institution that he wasn't there. And he made it very clear, I'm here. 
I don't like surprises. Talk to me. Tell me. You were here with us in bad times, and you were here with us in good times. You were here with us with success, and I know you were here with us in failure. You were here with us in health, and you were here with us in death. You were always here. You are not simply the chairman of the, of the boards of the Shalom Hartman Institute. You are our friend, and you've been there. And all of us don't just feel gratitude. We we'll feel love because of it. You often said, and I remember when my father told me, I met this person who said he's an American, a Washingtonian, and a Jew. And my father never met somebody who said those terms. I don't think he fully even understood what you meant. But it was, he's an American, a Washingtonian, and a Jew. And he said, these are three things that I care about. Your work of love and friendship and commitment and excellence with this institution was the place that you chose to invest both personally and on behalf of the Jewish people. That aspect of your identity, which is Jewish. But Bob, I know that there's another, a fourth part of your identity. And I've seen it over the years, and it's one of the most beautiful parts of who you are. You're not just an American and a Washingtonian and a Jew. You're also a Jerusalemite. When you come to Jerusalem, something about you changes. The aesthetics of this city, the energy of this city, is something that you love. It touches you. The rhythm, the sounds, the visual element of this city is something that even before we had a great mayor, and the city wasn't in the condition that it was in, you still loved it. Now it's easier to love Jerusalem. It's a, it's a good city. <laughs> but even before we had this mayor, and it was a stretch, and it wasn't so simple, you still loved it. You saw the beauty in it. And when you came to plan, plan this campus, you said, this has to be in the spirit of Jerusalem. You're the one. I lived here. I'm my granddaughter's 14th generation Jerusalemite. And you're the one who taught us that Jerusalem is about courtyards. Jerusalem is about subtlety. You're the one who picked that the entrance to the campus shouldn't be down there, but up here, that it should be understated and beautiful. Jerusalem touches your soul. Bob, you gave through this campus and through your friendship to all of us a gift to Jewish history. You gave a gift to the city of Jerusalem. You helped create an island of excellence, pluralism, decency, meaning. Today, with all the complexity of this year, today is a really good day. Because what we get to do is we get to repay ever so slightly that gift. Today, we get to give you a permanent legacy and name in a country, in a city, and an institution that you love. From today, the Shalom Hartman Institute is not simply going to be an institute housed in Jerusalem. Today, the Shalom Hartman Institute, from now on, is going to be, camp is going to be housed in the Robert Kogat campus. This is as it should be. Because Shaliva Shalanu Shilchahi, everything that I and everything that everyone here, students, faculty, staff, board, friends of this institution, everything that we have and everything that we receive from this institute is Shilcha, is because of you. Thank you.
to invite the mayor of Jerusalem and a close friend of the Institute, Nir Barkat. Shalom, good evening. Welcome to Jerusalem. Bobby, Daniel, Adina, and the Hartman family. Robert, Arlene, and the Kogod family. 
Angelica Berry, Chairman of the Hartman Institute of North America, the Hartman Institute board members, and many, many friends of this institution. When I decided to leave my business, that was practically about 12 years ago, and go to public service, everyone told me that there's a station I must pay a stop to, and that is go and meet Rabbi David Hartman. I remember meeting him, at, I think at your home, and I came out of the meeting a bit confused. He doesn't know me well, and I felt so empowered, so strong. I felt warmth, high acceptance, but actually, he sent me to learn and believe in the way I see Jerusalem. Not necessarily his way or other people's way. Throughout the years, every time I met David or the family, the institution, I left inspired. That DNA is deep in this institution, the research, the school, but I believe it's also in each one of us. The vision I have for the city of Jerusalem, I want to share that with you a second, and you'll understand the influence of this institution on my understanding of our future. When I share with people our future, I go back three and a half thousand years and remind everyone that Jerusalem was not divided and given to a specific tribe. It was a city that belonged to all tribes. All. And when people came to Jerusalem, that was managed by the kings, they all felt a sense of ownership and respect to different people than them because we all share Jerusalem in an equal way. Jerusalem is the foundation of modern democracy and pluralism as everyone that came to its gates felt equal. They say, Yerushalayim Musa, kol Israel chaverim. Jerusalem makes all people's friends. It's because of that attitude and the way it was managed that everyone was, was respected and only in Jerusalem could you see everyone else that doesn't be, sit or visit you in your own tribe, your own home, wherever your tribe was res uh, residing. And so Jerusalem created all people friends. Jerusalem has a role to respect people different than you. And actually when they say, Ki mitzion Torah, that also comes from that same DNA of Jerusalem. Because if something was successful in one of the tribes, it could be scalable, could be not, could be local success. But everything that was successful and accepted in Jerusalem automatically is accepted throughout the world because Jerusalem has representatives of all tribes, Jews and non-Jews alike. That philosophy and the role Jerusalem plays not only for its residents, but actually for the whole world, indeed is our future. And if you deeply understand that, you understand how important the philosophy of this institution is to the well-being, to the understanding of pluralism in the city of Jerusalem. Every time I come here, I go back and say, hmm, yeah, that's also a piece of the puzzle I should add to a better understanding of the future of the city of Jerusalem. So Jerusalem's role is to scale, to be a destination for pilgrims around the world, to develop processes in culture, in tourism, in sports that complement the holiness of Jerusalem. Focus on that meta layer that is not only the physical layer, but the uh, social layer and the bond between the different people. And you have to really understand that to come out with successful projects. 
when you come up with a, a marathon, Formula One, cultural institutions, the new train station, and everything else we're doing, you really have to think through how to do good with respect to others. You have to be very pluralistic in your approach and respect different opinions and empower different opinions. Exactly the same way that I believe all of us got inspired. So it's not only a concept, but I enjoy, we all enjoy in Jerusalem, a lot of the bogrim, the graduates of this organization, this institution. My team has a few members from the Harbin Institute. They understand the language we're talking about, like that. We're talking about the schools for boys and girls, that other cities envy Jerusalem, envy Jerusalem for the quality of education received in these schools and the importance of the graduates. Schools influence neighborhoods. And you see that around the schools of the Hartman Institute, huge phenomena of pluralistic people that come and reside in Jerusalem in general and around the school. It's a magnet to deal with negative migration and create talent. Institutes influence cities. And this, the fact that we have such research is very, very important for our future. I think the acceptance that I talked about was well viewed. Um, when uh, David Hartman passed away, and I came here to the funeral, and I looked around at the people, all people of Jerusalem. It was the best testimony for the strategy and the vision and the implementation of that concept. So I believe that uh, every one of us has a piece of that DNA. And it was not until we had the ceremony that uh, Daniel shared with me who we owe a great deal of favor and thank you. And that's to Robert Kogod. And I met Robert Kogod a few times in Washington and in Jerusalem. Now that I think about it, if I would have known, it would have made a lot of sense. Uh, but I, wasn't, I did not know, Robert, your dedication to this institute. I did see you as an anchor, somebody committed that you can always bank on, somebody that has deep connection and love to Jerusalem. But now everything makes sense to me. Uh, uh, Daniel took me aside and explained to me how deep your commitment is to this organization and to Jerusalem. And you should know that there's many, many dividends to that investment. Um, and there's no doubt in my mind that you helped uh, David build something really huge, really huge, with influence way over and beyond your imagination. And I'm here to say thank you on behalf of the people of Jerusalem, on behalf of myself, for the big help and contribution you helped shape us as better Jews, as more committed Jerusalemites. And there's no doubt in my mind that the dividends will be for decades upon decades into the future. Thank you very much for your dedication, not only to this institute, but to many other projects in Jerusalem. And uh, I can only wish that uh, we could meet every year, including next year, rebuilding and strengthening the city of Jerusalem. Toda Rabba.
יש מפרס לבן באופק מול ענן שחור כבד כל שנבקש לו יהי I'm very pleased to invite today's honoree, the person without whom we would not be here celebrating today, Chairman of the Board of the Shalom Hartman Institute, Mr. Robert Kogod. for your so very kind and generous comments. I was overwhelmed by your words. One of the most important aspects of society is leadership. And we are blessed that in Jerusalem, we have a mayor who is so understanding of his city and what his needs are and how to make it grow. And we're so very blessed to have Daniil to follow in the footsteps of his father, such a large, such a large job to do and to do it so successfully. So we're very fortunate and we should all always be mindful of that. And I would say to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, it is truly a great honor to have this campus bear my name. I am deeply appreciative. I'm delighted to have with us here today my entire immediate family. And I ask that they would just stand and be recognized. We will 
were all saddened by David Hartman's death in February, and the Institute will both honor and commemorate David in a manner befitting such a giant in February of next year. I first met David in 1981. My father-in-law, Charles E. Smith, brought David to Washington to speak about the importance of Jewish education. Later in the evening, when we were together, David asked me to tell him about myself and my background. As indicated, I told David that I'd come to understand that I was an American, I was a Washingtonian, I was a Jew, and I was trying very hard to be good at each of these, all at the same time. David found that interesting, and he asked me how much I knew about Judaism. My response, hardly unusual for the typical American Jew, was I was bar mitzvah, and then a trailing off of my Jewish education. David then invited me to come to Jerusalem to study with him personally for an entire week. What a compelling offer. I had once done an executive seminar at the Aspen Institute in Colorado and I really liked the total immersion. And by nature, I tend to have a, a lot of curiosity. I then had to figure out who, who was it that made this great offer? This being more than three decades ago, David was relatively unknown. But boy, was he charismatic. I had to find out how much of David was form and how much was substance. So I went out and did my due diligence. And I came to Jerusalem that same year to study with David. And after this first learning experience, I came back twice each year, oft times with my wife Arlene, and at times with children accompanying me, to study. Initially with David, and then with a large number of the scholars at the Institute. After so many years of study, I said to David, I said, look, Either you have to give me a diploma or flunk me out. <laughs> it was then that I became aware of the concept of lifelong learning. <laughs> In addition to the formal learning, David taught me that as Jews, we were to repair the world. And even though we had no assurance of success, our job description was to keep trying. So as to my studies, fate intervened. In 1995, Mayor Teddy Kollek, a great admirer of David and of the Institute, arranged for us to acquire this choice parcel of, la of land to build a home of our own. I then went from being a student to being a developer, 
all of us here today, as lovers of Jerusalem, as we all are, can recognize the opportunity, but also the challenge it would be to create a permanent presence in Jerusalem for the Institute. It's light, it's stone, it's character, it's history. A presence, hopefully, that would stand the test of time and at the same time to reflect the depth, the substance, the wisdom of the Institute. Having become very involved over the years in the governance and the financing of the Institute, I came to under also understand that I was a prime beneficiary. What learning, what growth for me, what a profound influence on my entire life. And for all of us here today, particularly of our generation, just think of the moment in history during which we live. We have witnessed the establishment of the State of Israel the third time in the history of, our, of the Jewish people with its own sovereign state, a strong, vital, vibrant democracy, truly a model for this part of the world. And within the state of Israel, the Hartman Institute, with its vision of tolerance and pluralism, its message, message of making a room for the other, built solidly on the foundation of Torah, Talmud, and Jewish scholarship, and providing a path for the well-being of all of the people of the world. What more noble a cause could one be part of? I would also like to take this opportunity to thank all of the people who have been part of this sensational enterprise. The boards, the administration, the staff, the scholars, the students, the benefactors, and others who all together have made this day and this dedication possible. So I thank you.